Hello everyone, you're joining me here at Golders Green for this next route that I will be reviewing. This series has been buried in my upload schedule for quite some time now due to other things popping up. However, here is the second episode of this series, where we will be reviewing the H3. I've always had a soft spot for the H3 due to it running nearby, and so I've had many memories of using the route growing up. In this video, I will be exploring the bus route that travels along Billionaire's Road visiting key points on the route and explaining the histories of both the H3 and the areas it passes through. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe and share this video, as it massively helps me out when you do. And anyway, join me as we ride the bus route down Billionaire's Row. The H3, whilst it operates down one of the wealthiest streets in the world, does have quite a lot else going for it as a route. It's a well-renowned route among enthusiasts, likely due to the awkward seven journeys a day schedule between 6.45am and 3pm, on Mondays to Saturdays. The first H3 journey starts at 645 on one of the six Optair Solo SRs operated between the 631H2 and H3. The journey ends at Golders Green at 7.38, and then the 631 between Henrietta Barnett School and Golders Green, a school route, starts at 7.50 on all days excluding Wednesday on Mondays to Fridays, using that Opto Solo SR, and another example to complete the five five-minute journeys to and from Henrietta Barnett. There are two examples that work the 6 through 1 in the morning, and the second example then goes to work the H3 journeys once the 6 through 1 has finished from 9am until when the final H3 arrives back into Golders Green at 2.52pm, for that bus to then work the afternoon journeys on the 6 through 1. The purpose of the H3 is to provide a circular service to outer parts of the suburb that otherwise don't see a nearby bus service, such as Wildwood Road, Ingram Road, and the Bishop's Avenue, as well as providing a more local service to those living on Ossleton Way and Hilltop, with the intention of connecting these folks to the shopping areas in East Finchley and Golders Green. The H3 originated from a bifurcation of its fellow Hampstead Garden suburb route, the H2, that came about in 1986, where certain journeys of the H2 were diverted via Littleton Road, Brim Hill, and the Bishop's Avenue. The H2 initially started out as a Monday to Saturday route, although some of the bifurcation that formed the H3 was only ever Monday to Friday during the middle of the day only. The H2 bifurcation journeys came in two variations, one that followed the H2 line of route from Golders Green to Marketplace, before turning right onto Littleton Road and following the 102 to Dean's Way, where the journeys would turn left and then turn left again onto Brim Hill, before heading down Ossleton Way and rejoining the current H2 line of route going towards Golders Green. Whilst this was quite the detour for passengers boarding along Kingsley Way and Mead Way, these journeys only operated during the middle of the day from 10.30 until 3pm, although on a much higher frequency than the current H3 sees every 20 minutes. These journeys don't do anything that the current H3 does, however. In fact, neither did the even more limited Bishop's Avenue journeys that operated on a Monday to Friday. There were only two of these journeys, and they operated non-stop to the Bishop's Avenue before following the Bishop's Avenue down to Dean's Way, taking that to Brim Hill, before following it all the way to Ossleton Way before turning left and following the H2's line of route from Marketplace. In 1994, the number of journeys using the Bishop's Avenue increased to four per day. However, on the 8th of June 1996, these bifurcation journeys were separated from the H2 under the new H3. This brought simplification to the Hampstead Garden suburb bus network, where the H3 operated between Golders Green and Hilltop before looping back to Golders Green, serving the current line of route to the Bishop's Avenue where instead of continuing through East Finchley like at present, it instead bore left onto Dean's Way, then Danbrim Hill like that of the old bifurcation journeys, and then continuing on to Hilltop like at present. In April of 2002, the service was diverted away from Brim Hill and instead continued up Ossleton Way before turning onto East End Road and following the 143 into East Finchley before progressing down the Bishop's Avenue to its current line of route. Since April 2002, the H3 starts in Golders Green before turning onto Golders Green Road, Hoop Lane, then down Hampstead Way, heading along Wildwood Road down Ingram Avenue onto Winnington Road, along Hampstead Lane, down the Bishop's Avenue, up onto the Great North Road, down East End Road, down Ossleton Way, a right onto Hilltop, a left onto Brooklyn Hill, 
and one more left onto Falladon Way before looping back to Golders Green along its previous line of route. The route has used minibuses for much of its lifespan, starting out with Mercedes-Benz's Beavers back in 1996 with MTL London, before switching to Optair Solos which briefly operated the route in 2005 under Metroline, before the route passed to Arriva the Shires with new Solos in 2006. These worked the route until 2018, when the route passed back to Metroline and newer SRs were introduced, which operate the route today. These are numbered OS2499 to 2504. Now, let's get on to the areas that the H3 serves, shall we? Welcome to Golders Green, an affluent suburb in northwest London home to the large Golders Green bus station, with a plethora of bus services extending all across North London. There's a coach station where passengers can board coaches to destinations across the country, and a tube station offering fast and frequent northern line services to and from central London and Edgware. The name Golders Green is believed to be derived from the name Godyear, of a family who lived within the area of what is present-day Golders Green. The area mostly existed as a small hamlet for many years, especially once the Finchley Road had been constructed through Golders Green to reach Finchley. It wasn't really until the development of Golders Green Station on the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway in 1907 that the area really started to develop. Golders Green has historically been home to an extensive Jewish community, with half of residents in Golders Green in the 2021 census identifying with the faith. There are 50 or so kosher restaurants within the area, 40 synagogues and 30 Jewish schools. In the centre of Golders Green lies a clock tower that commemorates victims of World War I and World War II. There's a high street that is opposite the bus station which has a variety of shops and cafes for one to buy groceries and enjoy nice cups of coffee. As for transport links from the bus station, one is able to change for the frequent 13 to and from Victoria and North Finchley, the 183 towards Kingsbury, Harrow and Pinner, the 260 towards Cricklewood, Harleston, Axton and Shepherds Bush, and the 328 towards Kilburn, Notting Hill Gate, Kensington and Chelsea, among many other routes. Golders Green is definitely a key transport interchange hub in northwest London, home to 18 bus routes and 22 coach services, which run to destinations such as Sheffield, Hull and Stansted Airport. Further up the road we progress to Golders Green Crematorium on Hoop Lane. Golders Green Crematorium was the first crematorium to ever be opened in London. Cremation up until 1885 was illegal, and only one crematorium had opened in the UK before the opening of the Golders Green one, being one in Woking. The crematorium was built in four phases within the first part of the 20th century, and many high-profile people have been cremated at this crematorium over the years. More than 300,000 cremations have occurred since the crematorium's inception, and the crematorium approximately does 2,000 cremations a year now. High-profile people who were cremated at Golders Green Crematorium include the famous psychologist Sigmund Freud, David Guest, Neville Chamberlain and Amy Winehouse. Opposite the crematorium you have the Golders Green Jewish Cemetery, which opened in 1895 and is maintained by the West London Synagogue and the Spanish and Portuguese Jewish Congregation. We then walk up to Meadway Gate, which has this sheltered seating area in the middle of the small roundabout, which I have sat at many times. It's a nice place to sit, to be honest. We then progress on to Hampstead Way, where we meet the Hampstead Heath Extension. The Heath was extended to Golders Hill Park in 1898, where the park was acquired from Sir Thomas Spencer Wells, and what was Wilde's Farm was purchased from Eton College in the early 20th century. As was very common at the time, many thought that the extension of the London Underground should mean new developments should be generated, and that was certainly what Eton College thought at least. A new station being built at Bull and Bush on Hampstead Way was perfect to instigate some development in Eton's eyes. However, Henrietta Barnett did not approve, as many locals didn't either. They were appalled at the idea of losing their beautiful views of the fields and the tranquillity of the area, and so strongly rejected the construction of Bull and Bush. And so the station's construction was halted in 1906 before the station's entrance and lift shafts were constructed.
The approach road to the station now forms part of Hampstead Way, and whilst the station was never left specifically derelict, having some significance during World War II and is where passengers can evacuate in the event of an emergency, the station remains relatively quiet. The Heath is home to cricket pitches, a playground, and is just a generally nice place to go for a stroll around. On the opposite side of the Heath extension, we walk out onto Wildwood Road. The initial purpose of Wildwood Road was for low-density housing to be built for rich folk to live in. Henrietta Barnet even stated that this is the high ridge from whence some of the most distant views are obtained, on which the rich will build their homes. The housing was built tactically, not only to appeal to their potential buyers, but where the houses were built on a ridge facing the Heath to make the most of the spectacular views. To those viewing the suburb on a map, the roads are very long-winded, but the main reason for this is to give the area a countryside-like feel to this section of the suburb. Most of the houses within Wildwood Road are Grade 2 listed buildings due to their high architectural quality. Behind Wildwood Road and sandwiched between that and Ingram Avenue is Turner's Wood, a private natural woodland and bird sanctuary, and also a fragment of Bishop's Wood which was part of the Bishop of London's medieval estate. The sanctuary is completely off limits to most of the general public, as the Ingram Avenue entrance is padlocked. Ingram Avenue saw development just before World War II started, with most houses in the area being built between 1931 and 1938. Like with its neighbouring Wildwood Road, the idea of the development of houses on Ingram Avenue was that it was low density to appeal to wealthy house occupiers who wanted individuality and space when it came to their properties. There are less than three houses per acre on Ingram Avenue, whereas the average across the suburb on each road is eight. Much of the architecture on Ingram Avenue is from the Georgian era, with most houses showcasing immaculate features and details from the era. The inspiration of wealth is apparent when it comes to how the houses were designed, where most houses have paved forecourts, wide driveways and garages to cater towards the rich who were likely to have had a selection of cars. As you progress along Ingram Avenue, you reach Hampstead Lane, which connects Whitestone Pond through to Highgate Village. On Hampstead Lane, you connect up with the 210, which also goes to Golders Green, and offers links towards Finsbury Park, Archway, and Brent Cross Shopping Centre. You will also meet up with Route 603, which I will be covering in an upcoming video that runs between Swiss Cottage and Muswell Hill, through Highgate Village, and East Finchley, where the H3 also serves. Kimwood House is located on the other side of Hampstead Lane, a popular weekend destination among North Londoners and is frankly a lovely place for a weekend stroll. It is suggested that the land Kenwood House is built on dates back to the 17th century, when the first house was believed to have been built on the estate. Eventually the house was acquired by the Earl of Mansfield in 1793, who extended the grounds of Kenwood House, which includes the now restaurant area within the house, where one can sit down and enjoy a nice lunch or a slice of cake and a cup of coffee. In 1906, the 6th Earl of Mansfield took control of the estate, before selling it off in 1922, where parts of it were purchased by the Kenwood Preservation Council, who then, along with King George V, reopened the house to the public in 1925. The remaining 74 acres that was under Lord Mansfield's ownership was also purchased in 1925. Eventually, ownership transferred to the GLC in... 1965. However, when it had its demise in 1986, the property then transferred to the English Heritage, who still watch over the site for today. The site, especially during the summer, is extremely popular, and in my opinion is one of the best and probably most underrated places to go for a walk. The hills are quite fearsome, but it's certainly an enjoyable place for a walk and there's a sense of quietness about much of the estate, although by the cafe it is a lot more hustle and bustle definitely somewhere I recommend you visit. A right turn once you have left Kenwood House takes you onto the Bishop's Avenue, nicknamed London's Billionaire's Row. Running from the tip of Hampstead Heath into East Finchley, this ultra-wealthy street is home to many famous people, allegedly, that is when their houses aren't being done up, that is, and the road is a run amok with construction vehicles and scaffolding for much of the time. Trevor Abrahamson, a local estate agent, stated back in 2006 that the Bishop's Avenue is one of the wealthiest circles in the world, which, to be honest, I can believe there is some truth to that statement. Houses on the Bishop's Avenue go up in value to as high as £65 million, and most properties along the Bishop's Avenue are registered to tax havens, which include the Bahamas and the Virgin Islands. 
In fact, at one stage, the Saudi royal family owned 10 properties out of the 66 along the Bishop's Avenue, before they flogged them for a combined value of 73 million. 16 of the properties along the Bishop's Avenue in 2014 were claimed to have been laid derelict for decades, although there have been some plans among architects to revive some of the unused space on the Bishop's Avenue for new housing developments to occur, with one that promised 300 new houses to be built. Abandoned housing is not just a problem on Billionaire's Row, but is a problem faced by many other places in England, where 1 million properties in 2022 were reported as unoccupied, an increase of 60,000 since 2018. As for famous residents who have lived on the Bishop's Avenue, they include Kazakhstani President Nasultan Nazarbayev, who purchased a property on the Elaborate Street in 2008 under great secrecy, Dame Gracie Field, Katie Boyle, and Paul McCartney's former wife, Heather Mills. Now, on to East Finchley we progress. East Finchley as an area has records dating back to the 1360s. However, it wasn't until the establishment of the Great Northern Railway operating through East Finchley Station in 1867 that the area started to develop into the area that it is nowadays. Much of the land East Finchley was built upon was part of the Bishop of London's old hunting ground on Finchley Common, which comprises parts of areas surrounding Finchley including Fry and Barnet. The previously mentioned Bishop of London built a road through Finchley, called the previously discussed the Bishop's Avenue, triggering a construction of pubs within the area which include the old white lion that sits next to the tube station, the bald faced stag at the junction with Fortis Green, and the five bells which the H3 passes along, uh, along East Stem Road. East Finchley is home to a local high street with a plethora of local businesses along it, and one standout local business, at least across North London, is the Phoenix Cinema. The Phoenix Cinema was established back in 1912, staying open since and is remaining as one of the UK's oldest cinemas. Whilst the cinema has mostly stayed independent, there have been numerous changes of owners, including the, the short-lived acquisition by the Granada Leisure Group. The cinema is truly independent nowadays, however, and due to it being a communal cinema, it offers local community events alongside their screenings to keep the cinema afloat due to it not being grant maintained and it's instead relying entirely on its income. East Finchley also has a tube station on the other Northern Line branch of the Northern Line, with fast and frequent services operating towards the city, West End and other North London suburbs such as Mill Hill, Archway and Barnet. Now, leaving East Finchley, there isn't a huge amount to say about Hilltop and the surrounding roads. Much of the area that the H3 passes through is along your typical residential road, with not a whole lot to comment on. At the bottom of Ottleton Way there is a selection of shops for one to buy groceries from, however I can't see that being anywhere near as popular a shopping destination as perhaps East Finchley or Golders Green would be. I will say that Hilltop and Brooklyn se Hill sections of the loop are quite tight, even with the solos, and the solos have to be very careful not to hit into parked cars due to how tight the road layout is as a result of having them. Now, what was the service like to use? Well, the H3 is an hourly service mostly designed to ferry older people around the, from the suburb and East Finchley where other buses services aren't as plentiful as well as providing some nifty links such as Kenwood House to East Finchley for those wanting to a stroll on the heath. However, the service was and is usually very quiet, usually carrying passengers in single digit numbers throughout the day. The H3 is one of a few routes in London which actually has more annual mileage per year than customers who use the service, similar to the 347 and 399 who have also achieved a similar feat. The H3's fellow Hampstead Garden suburb counterpart, the more frequent H2, has a greater catchment area of the suburb, and whilst the suburb is a very wealthy part of London, the roads the every 15 minutes, 7 days a week H2 serves are slightly less wealthy than Winnington Road, Ingram Avenue and the Bishop's Avenue, which is what the H3 serves, which presumably generates a lot more patronage. The H3 also has very similar links from other routes paralleling the service, the 102 offers links between the Ossleton Way, East Finchley and Golders Green areas a lot faster than the more convoluted but still fun nonetheless H3. 
The AH3 is also paralleled by the every 12 minute 143 between East Finch and Nottleton Way, and the 210 offers faster links from Hampstead Way and Kenwood House into Golders Green. Another aspect of the service that I noticed was how communal it was. When I was filming the onboard segment, this kind lady went up to the driver and gave him a present which I thought was really sweet, and it shows that the passengers who use the H3 have a great connection with the drivers who drive the route. Whenever I've used the H3 previously, there's always been such a homely feel about the route, where elderly passengers will go up to you and start a conversation, and even when I was out filming the H3, the driver was chatting with me as he'd seen me capturing the places along the route before. There's something just so lovely about the service. Now, what do I believe could be improved about this service moving forward to perhaps make it a little less awkward? To be honest, I'm not too sure on what could really be improved about this service. You have to bear in mind that the majority of the people using this service are elderly people. The frequency at present is simply too low to attract younger or more affluent folk from using it. But then again, would they? There are definitely bits of the route which are quite secluded from the rest of the bus network. The Bishops Avenue and Ingram Avenue sections of the service spring to mind. However, for most of the route, able-bodied folk would be able to reach alternative services that provide similar links to destinations served by the H3, such as the 102, 210 and H2, which are not only far more frequent but in some cases a whole lot faster. The 210 especially, the 102 can be quite prone to delays and congestion during the peak hours. I would like to come back to the Bishop's Avenue point however, where even if most of the properties do lay derelicts for now, there are a plentiful number of staff no doubt who, find, who might find a more regular bus service more appealing to use to and from East Finchley Station for the Tube, although I highly doubt that patronage would justify a bus service operating down the Bishop's Avenue for that specific purpose, so I can't see extended operating hours throughout the day or an every half hourly frequency being viable, especially when you consider that the manual kilometres operated on the H3 are actually more than the passengers using the service, where 20,564 passengers used the service in 2022-23, to but yet 37,454 bus kilometres have been operated, so that was an average of 0.549 passengers per kilometre making it a truly awkward and underused bus route. Anyway, that's it from me folks, I hope you enjoyed riding the bus route down Billionaire's Row with me in this video, and please feel rest assured that more videos in this series are coming soon, as three are already in the making to be released over the next few weeks. If you have any suggestions on what other routes I should cover, please do leave a comment in the comment section below, detailing what ones you'd like to see. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, subscribe and share this video as it massively helps you out when you do. And anyway, take care everyone, see you in the next video.